Huh? Pretty sure we're live here. I well, I'm not a hundred percent sure about that. Oh, yeah, we're good. We're good. Awesome. Yeah, how dare I turn the mess mic on? Okay. Definitely turn me. <coughs> cool. Hello, Eugene. Uh, how you doing, Dan? Good. How was no. your week? It was good. Just uh, damaged my fingers practicing. Yeah, so tell me about that. Tell me about what happened there. So I'm doing a full full step bend right uh -huh. here. Right here. On okay. The, you know that A. And so I just... <laughs> Wow. So I just so I just pulled it, pulled it and pulled the pulled the and skin what, away from the nail. What kind of so what kind of song was this for? It's a song? rocking song. It's a it's a the new popular one right now from Elevation uh hmm. uh Graves into Gardens. It's hmm. got a part. I'll just play it up here, but it just the guitar is frequently doing. This is doing it down here though. Yep. Except it's hitting both strings, so. Then it moves up and makes it easier on me. Oh, yeah? Nice. Sounds really cool with a full band going. Just gotta make sure you get enough, and I got a lot of overdrive on it. But yeah, pull Do that. Pull that. Yeah, the overdrive. you were just playing yeah it almost sounded like jet i didn't wanna because you know if we play something live here we might get in trouble that's true yeah if we're getting too close <laughs> i gotta turn my guitar up a little bit i guess <laughs> <laughs> well, but yeah, dude. So I was uh, this week. Um, we were gonna talk about intervals. been on your playlist this week dan oh man uh graves in the gardens because i was practicing it yeah um i uh, was listening to a, another one by austin stone worship called uh gotta look this up <laughs> <laughs> man it's a it's a really great song and it's on my weekly playlist right now um nice it's not on my weekly playlist i just lied i'm sorry Oh, <laughs> uh, <coughs> so Austin Stone Worship. It's a. Uh, why can't I just think of it? 
You Never Change by them. Hmm. Really good song. Nice. I was also listening to Austin. Not Austin. Rod Stewart, Young Turks. Have you ever heard that song? I feel like I have, yeah. It's uh, something about the song. Yeah. Just fills me with some sort of like nostalgia for something I've never ever known. I used to really? listen to it like so playing Grand Theft Auto, like all those years ago. Grand Theft Auto. Yep. I don't know. I think it was four. A lot yeah. of my I there are occasionally there'll be a song that'll come on the radio or something, and um, it'll be a similar thing because I was a Need for Speed guy. Okay. Used to love. Yeah, but it's it's weird because it's. It's more like what the song's about. Yeah. Yeah. It's about these young teenagers that make a stupid decision and end up having to fight for their survival and he's writing a song for them. And I don't know what it is about the song. It just kind of kind of sticks with me. <laughs> I, I, can't, that, I can't describe it. It's that primal instinct. I guess. I you You want to be you want to be in a situation where you're just fighting for your life you know <laughs> as a <laughs> hormonal teenager if if not you know <laughs> i don't think that's it i i don't know i don't know i was just i was listening to it and i was thinking about that and i'm like i don't i don't know what it is about this song and some other songs and some other stuff yeah just cuz it's not like stuff from my childhood just gets to me but there's certain songs and certain sounds in certain places and certain mm-hmm. movies I watch that there's something about them that just kind of yeah sticks inside me and it's just it's not necessarily nostalgia but I don't know what it is yeah so were you a song guy did you have like songs and because I know you sing and stuff too I so do sing do, so I, do you have like lyrics in your head like songs that you're like you sing along to yeah no. yeah I mean I get songs stuck in my head all the time by yeah. other artists um sometimes i get my own song stuck in my head and i don't remember them because i don't have my lyrics <laughs> to my own stuff memorized <laughs> yeah. um mostly i listen to songs very probably more intellectually than people normally do yeah but uh uh when i was younger it's more about feeling but as i got older it's more about you know the lyrics right lyrical content and less expression and more what are they expressing exactly yeah yeah yeah, for me it was definitely uh, sounds and uh, somebody would ask me what the lyrics were to a song, and I wouldn't, I couldn't tell. Yeah, couldn't tell. I, I feel like a lot of people. That's the thing. Like, I was like, "Have you listened to the lyrics of that song?" It's like I just like the music. And it's like, okay. And then yeah. the funny thing is, like, the very next thing is like, I'm playing like hardcore heavy metal music. And they're like, I can't understand the words of the song. It's like, so you do care about the lyrics of the song. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know. Yeah, that. The, um, I would probably look them up later. Like, if I, if I really have. I definitely a, looked them up. After, after, like, for lyrics, I mean, if I, after I hear the song, I'm like, ooh, I dig that song. I wonder what they're actually singing about, though. You know, you look it up, see what it's mm-hmm. all about. Like yeah. the bare naked ladies, you heard that song. Uh, been one week. It's been one week since you looked, put your head to the side and said I'm angry. No, no. you haven't heard that song. It no. was like a staple from when we were younger. <laughs> it's so good. Wait, maybe I did. Absolute maybe nonsense it, lyrics. Maybe I did. Yeah, I don't know. Absolutely, it's just such a poppy song. It's just kind of yeah. fun. Yeah. But uh, eh, I'll show it to you after this because I don't want to get us kicked off of YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> you uh i i i think i'll never forget this like when i was 13 um i was on a plane trip to ireland and i was with a group of people we were going to ireland it was like a church thing yeah mission trip deal and we were just going. Um, this is a group I was in was doing anti-bullying skits for kids in school and everything. And somehow we these had this connection of missionaries in Ireland, and they were like, "Hey, why don't you come out and do all your skit stuff?" 
really it was my sister my sister was kind of the the one in this group that was doing things i i did do things mainly help move things around and set things up because i was younger but on this plane trip uh (laughs) i had a cd player with headphones and i was listening to this i had my little packet of cds i was 13 years old i was just putting in cds and i looked at my sister because she was sitting next to me i was like you know i just would i want to hear something like crazy you know i want to hear some like something crazy hard and whatever because i think i had a life house cd and it's definitely not crazy and i was (laughs) and i heard the guitar you know whatever the guitar was doing whatever it was and and i was like that's a cool sound and i was like imagine i want to know what that something so my sister us being in our little christian group here she goes oh i got this cd (laughs) she pulls out a skillet cd and she gives it to me and i was like looking at it like well this is kind of crazy looking and i put it in the i forgot what album. it might have been that collide album or no it was the first like album they had in like the mid 90s or something and uh she i put it in and i was like dang like that's a big guitar and i I didn't even play it this time i just was like so into it and forever after that (sighs) I just thought that was the coolest thing ever, that sound. Skillet. Yeah. They're good. Skillet kind of turned me on. But, I, you know, my grandfather was into the old school country, like Johnny Cash and yeah. Willie Sean Nelson. Reno. Yeah. Mom was like R&B and soul. My dad was like the 70s rock and roll kind of guy. So, yeah. Did you ever see Walk the Line? The yeah. The Johnny Cash movie? It's a good movie. And what was it, Joaquin Phoenix? Is that how you said Yeah, Joaquin name? Phoenix, yeah. 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 He did a good job. He did a good job. I thought it was job. a good movie. And then, you know, last year he plays the Joker. You yeah. know, you never know what that guy. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> you never know. You never One minute know. he's singing country songs and drinking booze. Next, Next thing you know, he's drinking booze and shooting people. <laughs> I actually haven't seen the Joker movie. It was it was a wild it was a wild film. It, you know, it it had this. I mean, it had a lot leading up to it. That's for sure. And when I saw it, I thought it was good, but I you know it wasn't like. One thing that jumped out at me was how artsy the film was, and. It's really meant to be an exploration of mental illness, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And it uh, it was a very artsy film. And the whole time I sat back and I was like, wait a minute. This is about a comic book character. <laughs> well, on the surface is about a comic book character. Yeah. But yeah. anymore, you can't make a movie if it's not a, about a comic book character or a remake of something old. They don't yeah. they don't accept making new stuff. That's mm. why we keep seeing the same regurgitated stuff over and over again. So um, people are suing artists, people. no, it's just they're not letting it happen. TV execs and things like that are yeah. not letting it through. They're not huh. paying people for original content. They need to meet certain diversity quotas. Oh um, yeah. And yeah. but uh, but yeah. So what they're gonna ha- what they're having to do is get creative in their storytelling with um, superheroes. Like okay, so this is a superhero movie or this is a comic ca- book character movie, but underneath it's a challenge about yeah. mental illness and how the world pr- approaches it and yeah things like that or um so yeah. they're they're having to get creative in order to be creative <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean those th- that trilogy there with christian bale as batman oh, I, so those, good. those were like so good i mean you, it's almost like you weren't you forgot what you were watching yeah almost like you were yeah, like it's like, like this when, isn't this isn't a first... superhero movie this is a <laughs> yeah. this is just a you know a view on society in general. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, it was well done. I mean, halfway through the first, what was it, Batman Begins? Yeah, Batman Begins. Yeah. 
halfway through that film you mm-hmm. forgot you were watching Batman because yeah. it's like this whole yeah it's just this guy who could have been like a paramilitary organization yeah. Or something. yeah 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 he was just this I think that's what away. they wanted I think yeah. that's definitely what they wanted yeah and you almost felt you almost could believe in the fact that there could be a dude that could pull this off who made yeah. some ties with some some top notch uh military company he's rich mm-hmm. he's got connections and you know he's in got he's in the city gotham but you know yeah hey we're all in our own personal city gotham in our hearts and then and then they did batman versus superman yeah it's not <laughs> it was a good <laughs> attempt <laughs> i just <laughs> I think what they tried to do is they tried to copy Marvel and what they did. Yeah, they were trying to make it exciting. And and what the problem was is like the Superman, the Man of Steel movies, fantastic, great movies. Yeah. Um, and uh, but what they did is then they combined it into this generic superhero movie with a generic superhero movie plot, and there was no storytelling. There was nothing. They spent all this time gathering everybody and. Yeah, that was one thing I, I've I've noticed with Marvel and DC is DC just seemed like there needs to be more. They're gritty. That's what they've always. Yeah, yeah there needs to be gritty. There needs to be like more thought with them. Marvel, if you just want to go watch some superheroes do stuff, I mean, go watch that. Yeah. Uh, you know, Marvel to me, and I, I know that you know, I think they're good. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But. Uh, I just think it's just for an ADD generation at times because it's just like, like all over the place and the jokes and the script and you're like, all right. After yeah. a while, like how many I, times can you tell the same story? My over and sis, over again? my sister loves Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, that was a good movie. It was I, really funny. I, I didn't really enjoy it. Yeah. I thought it was just too, too comical, o- overdone. Oh, it was no? a little too okay. overdone, I guess. I don't know. But it's got Crispy Rat, and he's a great actor. <laughs> Dude, you want to see a crazy movie? He was in The Tomorrow War. Yeah. That was Holy good mackerel. That and uh, That was like a whole nother take on science fiction. That was a wild stuff. movie. Yeah. Um Did you see the one where he's in space with um Jennifer Lawrence? Um <sighs> You know what I'm talking about? He's aboard the uh, spaceship. Man. We need to start writing this stuff down. <laughs> First, we didn't even know we were going to talk about I don't about know. This. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, no, I didn't no, think I'll we were going to get on the I'll movies, but yeah. Yeah, I don't Chris even know. Chris Pratt. How do we even get here? <laughs> uh, it started with uh, Walk the Line. The passengers. Passengers. The Passengers. Passengers. Yeah. Just Passengers. Okay. That was an intense movie. Was it? Yeah, that, and that asked some very, very difficult questions in it. Did it? Yeah, which is why it sparked a lot of media controversy. Hmm. <laughs> because, you know, anytime you ask some serious questions, you're going to get some backlash from people. Because yeah. a lot of people like to view the world as kind of just very one-dimensional. Yeah. Which is funny. It's Yeah, it's... it's. And the other thing that, you know, I think happens is, uh, you know, they just... I guess a lot of people just kind of trust the immediate thing that comes out on the news, the immediate portrayal of something. Well, as long as it's said by their side. Right. You know. But it's hard to, it's hard because if you just listen to anyone, everyone, you don't come to a conclusion. But if you only listen to yourself, you come to poor conclusions. Hmm. So you, you always got to ask the question, is there a happy medium? Yeah. And that's that's difficult to know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, so guitar intervals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guitar stuff. Because I mean, this is supposed to be a guitar. How lo- how many minutes was that? YouTube cast. I don't know. Oh, You're twenty right. minutes. Twenty minutes. Seriously. That was twenty minutes, dude. Where do you see a timer? Uh, oh, right there. I, I see the live. Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. Damn. Well, okay, yeah, we can talk about intervals. Um, we were playing a tune. I what key it was in. It's an A. Okay. C. 
six. I'm actually gonna five. Four. You're gonna what? E D F sharp minor. Scale degrees first Let's or intervals? Well, I'm going to go to our other screen here. and I'm trying to. I know we got nothing there. We got nothing there. So let me go ahead and just do. I'm going to enlarge my one cam view here. Okay. The one with your guitar? Yeah. Oh, my middle finger still hurts. <laughs> People listening. Do not keep playing if you hurt your finger. <laughs> no pain, no gain. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Dan, um, one trick that I've learned, and Dan, maybe we'll have you, I'll let you use that webcam over there for something you might want to show. With intervals, um, I think with guitar, we're very shape-based orientated. So, very much so. Dan is playing his riff that we've been playing through the F sharp minor. E major. E, uh, D major. So, technically, I'm gonna, we're saying that we're in the key of A major. You got that six chord for the F sharp, and then you got your five and your four, and it'll probably go back to one eventually, but not. So, um, the easiest way I found to play intervals, and I and I learned this trick, was so here's your A if we're in the key of A. So that's our A, um, but if we, uh, for those that don't know, when you want to play, you could play an A major scale here. I'll just play off the straight the notes. That actually got covers two octaves. What I found, and if we'll, we'll get into scales another time, but um, with intervals, for those that might know, um, certain um, positions for scales. So an F sharp minor scale has the same key signature as an A major scale. So we're just starting on a different note. So we're going from Yeah, it's just the same eight notes, so whereas you might play this for you might play this for an A major. Yeah. And so the F yeah. mi sharp minor. Would be. So Dan was starting with an open A. I accidentally played something on the key. Yeah. Yeah. So same exact deal. Um, but uh, with the intervals, you're basically taking like small chords in the key, and you're uh, you're using them. Throughout, just in, in a smaller um, 
space. So, um, what I'm doing here. Oh, I'm not an A. So here's my A, right? I'm making an A major triad. And then here's like your regular old A. Yeah, it looks actually an inversion. just what I like to do is bar the second fret in this case going down to the minor the relative minor and playing my intervals off of the relative minor shape so I'll start with the and then the, so the next six so I'm doing this in six I, I didn't even say that I'm doing intervals of sixths exercise sometimes. Nice. Those are all sixths. Yeah. It's the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. It just yeah. doesn't start at one. Yeah. And you were doing it on you were doing it on one set of strings. You were doing it on the third mm -hmm. and second or something. Yeah, so this is the second set of triads is what it's based off of. Um but yeah so the well here, how about you take this cam and you flip it. Let's do that. I am probably going to keep it on. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> That's good. Beautiful. Cool. So show them what you were doing. So I just starting over here. Just something to practice triads. <laughs> in sixth you're using a six and you're just going up the scale and you're just using you're just creating those shapes i'm doing it in see the chord but you're just playing two notes out of the chord yeah, so if you take your A sorry I always forget the diminished one <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so yeah it's you're just creating now playing 
full chords will muddy it up. Mm-hmm. But like so, Dan, if you want to play your song, I'll do I'll do some intervals over you. Okay. As if I was doing, if I was sitting here trying to play chords over you, so let's do it again. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's just, yeah. I played a, wrong, a bad, the wrong chord, but, but yeah, it well, just, I mean, it just doesn't sound as. It's just very very dense yeah very, very dense yeah. yeah so yeah i think it's a good like depending on what setting you're in and you're if you're playing with a group and you're wondering what again what can you do as a lead guitar player this is a great trick to have mm-hmm. in the back pocket and they're used so often with so many things yeah so many lead lines so yeah i mean there's a lot of worship music that uses them yeah. Um, but I'm sure there's a lot of everybody that uses six because they sound so good. Oh yeah. Cool thing is you can also do the the D shape ones in the same exact um yeah. shapes. Yeah. Yeah. I really like this. Like, and that's supposed to be a diminished right there because it's a seven. there's really nice yeah it's uh because where let me do do it again again this is kind of a harsh thing and that's not so bad but if you just do the if you want to keep it from being too harsh minimizing the amount of notes because a diminished chord has got a lot of minor thirds in there So, yeah, yeah. The sixth, and you were talking about the fifth, um, the other day. Yeah, last <laughs> week. Yeah, yeah. That's like something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which so it's really cool. Fifths are nice because they're just right here. I think it's Oh, okay. <laughs> um that's uh Chasing Cars by Snow Patrol. Oh Stop. 
bits. <laughs> I had to play something so that we didn't get in trouble. Oh, yeah. We oh, were, we'll be fine. That was an arrangement. That, <laughs> we're, we're discussing it. We're not playing the song, so okay. we, can, we, can, we can comment on it. Okay. Snow Patrol, Chasing Cars. Yeah. It's playing the song, so we can, we can yeah. comment on it and demonstrate yeah. things. Chasing Cars, yeah. particularly on the highway. Look both ways. <laughs> so, we but yeah, let's get copy strike, right strike for playing a fifth interval. <laughs> there you go. So, play your um, play your song again, and I'm gonna try messing with the fifths again. Technically, when it comes to fifths, I like to orchestrate them in the way that I would a pentatonic scale. So obviously, F sharp minor pentatonic. That guy right there. I'm finding, I'm looking and finding all the fifths that are in that block. So where, so here's one. Here's another one. Uh, here's another one. Another one. Technically not. That's kind of more in the minor. Is it a minor fifth? So this is the... Uh, I'm adding a two. According, of F in the, according to F sharp minor, I'm putting a two in there, which is you're supposed to get not have the two when you're playing a pentatonic scale. But and there's a fifth there, according to F sharp minor. So yeah. That's a really popular one. Uh, it's the basis for a lot of power chords. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Power chords. Yeah. So. Exactly. But you can use one, them. five, five, one. You can use them inside of like chord yeah. progressions like i was doing with you there on your song you know you they can just, they're you, very they are more dense than the sixth is though they are you got to be careful with them but if used right there they yeah. do well throwing uh, what i like to do is have a fourth and a fifth flopping so if you do, do your song again uh, you'll see me do this <laughs> Safe zone because constant fifths are kind of 
can you might hit something that's a little too edgy or thirds start getting a bit iffy because if you put the wrong third in there (sighs) yeah and they're so and when you play thirds they're so close together um uh, yeah they're just you know this when they're so close together like that it can be tough but they do have a place play my play the chord progression sure um i want to show something so one thing that occurs in a lot of worship music is you can just take the one of the scale and it usually works over most progressions Five and a one. I keep going down to the seven on occasion because it's right there. Mm-hmm. And it just, it adds a lot of texture without doing much. And it gives it a very kind of open feel to the song. Yeah. And so, you know, it doesn't muddy up things usually. It can get repetitive if you do it on every single song, which I actually do quite frequently. sound they don't sound terrible but if you if i play thirds over the progression uh, problem is they draw a lot of attention to themselves and if you're trying to do that be a trick to see mm. you think you could do sevens seventh intervals um yeah Let's probably see. it's gonna sound like willy wonka isn't it <laughs> <laughs> just curious what it would sound like um so you got
I don't spend a whole lot of time learning where the sevens are located. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's uh that's a weird one. It makes a very weird kind of melancholy sound. It's all kind of like, you know, once you once you get a feel for using them, I feel like they're mm-hmm. at any interval. The eight. And switching. Them. Yeah. Oh, well, hey, that, that has some stuff too, so do your, do your rip. sound like the Foo Fighters though. the sound of octaves when I was trying to emphasize a melody. Yeah, so the melody for this actually is where I first picked it up and then figured out the lyrics based on it, but it's just okay. octaves. So the the um the, uh, octaves are nice. They are lo- very energetic, though. Yeah. They're very energetic, and really, they're meant to be a kind of they're meant to thicken up. Yeah. Single notes. I'm trying to think of a good. There's a song by this band called Chicken Foot. A heck of a name and uh again a lot of people probably don't know them but i'm a big joe satriani fan sammy hagar singing michael anthony on bass and um uh, red hot chili peppers drummer chad chad smith chad smith, chad smith on drums so there's a song they do. And that's a that's like a, a spot where again we could be sitting here and we could be playing um, trying to do chords but what you have with what's happening there is you're actually muting a lot of notes so you're playing an E7 chord you're playing i would call it a riff though so so take your seventh chord okay okay so we're gonna work around this shape we're not gonna play this shape though so your first finger is gonna go on your fifth string seventh fret and your middle finger is gonna go on the seventh fret as well on the third string. 
you're basically playing a seventh. You're playing a dominant seven there. Because there's your E, and there's your uh, That'd be a D. And then minor seven, yeah, dominant seven. Yeah. Minor seven, yeah. So, and then you got your low E. But then what you're doing is you're hammering onto an octave. So you're going. Yeah. I think you feel a lot better. <laughs> yeah. And again, this is, a, I think, a great example of using lesser notes in a chord to better amplify a great sound and yeah. riff where you're just doing this. And that was the minor third there. So it's almost like that Jimi Hendrix chord. So there's your minor third right there. So you're going... Putting your ring finger down on that G. Yep. Do, yeah. you, uh, do you keep the one there? No. Kind of, it's there. Because when you lift it, so when you lift that, when you go, you actually lift your pinky off and you play with the ring finger down on that G and it gives you that. Which, if you're going for the full Jimi Hendrix feel, you're going like this. But this is, again, minimizing and only tackling the notes that are really prominent. The seven and the third there. And I'm actually muting the A string with my first finger. My, the, pad of my, the pad of my finger here is uh, just rubbing against the A string, so it's muting the A string. Yeah. Again, the lesser sixth. notes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and dude, I was learning, um, I'm playing a gig, a wedding gig, and we're learning Wild Horses. And there's a part in the song in Wild Horses where Keith Richards is going. He's holding a C note in the bass, but he's playing an F. He's holding, oh. He's going from C to F, but he's leaving the C in the bass. Yeah. I do this all the time in worship. Yeah. And that's kind of another example. It fattens up your F. And yeah. I mean, this is where I get this cheat kind of. Kind of just start right. cheating by leaving out the bass, the prominent bass note. Right. Because I, I trust my bass player to get this bass note. <laughs> nice. That's great. So. I think that's what we got for intervals. Yeah. How do we want to end this, Dan? Jam session. Let's do it. As always. What do you want to play? <laughs> What's what have you been jamming to lately? 
I, so I, I guess we I guess we could, I don't know if we can play an actual song if you if an actual song you've been learning I'm sorry it's a uh, if uh can't uh, can just play some chords there um let's see let's just because we write songs every show we write a new song uh, every abs- show absolutely uh, you want to hear a song I'm working on okay. I I don't expect us to do it but. I'm gonna make a new, I'm making a new jam, and I'm going to do, but I'm playing like this G major 7 arpeggio. It actually goes to an E minor 7 arpeggio. But so G, G major 7. I'm just trying to come up with something now. Jam too. It's the air. Okay. Okay. Keep going. editing Dan's editing edge sound effects going on there.
That's all right. Oh. That's all right. Oh, that's a long time to keep that up. <laughs> so now your other hand is going to get all now my other hand up. Is. Everything about me. <laughs> get old. Get old. <laughs> Come on. That's fun. That's just a simple dotted eight delay. That's great. That sounds really good. I really like your setup. That's another song I've always been writing. I think the next so. time we have a podcast, we're going to be showing off our pedal boards and our gear, I think, too. Okay. Because I, I, I do kind of want to know what you have yeah. over there. So. Okay. Cool. 
All right, folks, that is all. Thanks for tuning in. It has been real. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.